So in this video, I want to show how you can use one of these Mikritic routers to create two segregated LANs and two segregated sets of uh, SSIDs with those LANs. So what we're looking at doing here essentially is having internet coming into one of these routers and then splitting it so there's two networks that have both wired and wireless connectivity. I'm using the HAP AC Lite. Their other products will work similarly. I love these little things. They're 50 quid. They've got five um, fast Ethernet ports, so 100 meg, and then you have uh, dual band wireless, so 2.4 gig and 5 gig as well. For the money, they are phenomenal pieces of kit. They also do 3G, 4G, USB, internet backup, but I've never used that, so I uh, can't really say much about it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reset this router. So this one I've just reset. So these are the default configuration, default settings. And what I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to treat the default network as being one of my networks. So in my scenario, often I'm on site, I'll be given one internet feed to wherever I'm working. I want all of the devices I'm looking after on a control network and I'll want internet on that control network because I might need to download some tools or whatever. And then I want a second network that I can give away to other people that allows them access to the internet, but doesn't allow them access to my control network. So I'm looking at two networks that are segregated from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this first one as being my control network. There's no reasons to this being a control and the other one not being control. It makes no difference. So I'm just going to call my wireless control two and control five. Uh, this is, you can see the two gig and the five gig being separate. I'm going to set a Wi-Fi password because you always should. And I'm also going to change my IP address. So this IP address is the default of this, uh, of this this router so i'm going to change it to dot 10 just to illustrate that this is going to be my control network uh 192.168.10.x will be my control network there so yeah reset the ip address and also need to change its uh the server range or the dhcp pool as this will become somewhere else in the system it's just so that they reflect the same actual network addresses so i'm going to apply that configuration while that applies i'm now going to need to jump to a different IP address to control it. Also, I'm on Windows, so I need to actually disconnect from the network and reconnect or any other way force a reset of that IP address. Super, so I'm now in my control network accessing this on my control network IP address. I can see from another laptop that I have both my wireless networks changed. So this essentially would be my control network sorted. So going back to this uh, five ports I have here, and the way that this works essentially is that the internet goes into this port then this second port essentially becomes a master port of these other ones. So these four ports behave as if they're one network segment. And the way that we change that, because we're going to stick port five as being our guest network, the way that we would change that is to go in webfig and then in interfaces, go into this interface for Ether 5, which is the port I just showed, and change this master port to be none. So once you've done that, click apply and then OK and then it will uh, drop off and then pick back up again. Super, so once we've done that, we're gonna create a new bridge interface. So this bridge here, I'm gonna rename to bridge-control. And that will become important later on to know that you're, you're, you, you, know, you have a naming convention. So then I'm gonna add a second bridge, so add new. I'm gonna call this one bridge-guest. And I'm gonna leave everything else as it is. So apply an okay, and now I have two bridges. So next thing to do now that we've got a new bridge is to assign that port that we uh, pulled away from the other group to that new bridge. So I'm going to go into bridge ports and then add new. And what we're going to do in here is select Ether5, that port, and we're going to add it to the bridge guest uh, bridge. So apply, apply and OK. And we see that down at the bottom as being uh, now associated that port with that bridge. So the next thing we need to do is give that bridge an IP address. So this is essentially the IP address of the uh, router facing outwards onto that network. So if we go into addresses and click add new, so I'm going to give it a 10.10.10 .10 network address and slash 24, so the standard uh, sort of subnet size, and then it should automatically, but it didn't there, so we're going to give it a network address of 10.10.10.0. .10 so, uh, and in the interface, I'm going to choose the bridge guest. So this essentially is setting up a network address for the router to see what's on that network. So click apply and then okay. And you should see that here as being uh, allocated to that interface. Now what we need to do is we need to make devices on that network able to see out to the internet. So this is a firewall setting. So in firewall and then NAT, we will see that we have masquerading for, well, for everything. I'm just gonna add a rule in here. So what I'm gonna do is choose the uh, source NAT and choose the source address being from that network. So 10.10.10.0 slash 24 which is our network address. So if it's from that network on the source NAT, I am going to uh, action with masquerade. 
uh, and then we go again apply and OK. So you can see that one there. Great. Next thing to do is that now we have a network, uh, currently the devices that plug into that port wouldn't get an IP address, so we're going to add a DHCP server for that network. So in DHCP server, I'm just going to use the DHCP setup, and then I'm going to choose the guest network. So I click next, you can see it's chosen the uh, network address or the, the network's network address from that, that port that we just chose, that bridge port. Um, so we can choose the gateway for DHCP, which would be that port on that network or that address on that network. And you can see it's already allocated a decent range for that network from dot two to dot two five four. So we can click next on that DNS server. Now this is this is where it gets interesting. The DNS server you will need to set manually. So I'm going to set that as 10.10.10.1, which is the router's address on that network. Now that's important for something we're going to do later on. We click next and least time I don't care about. So it's created a new pool, it's created a new server. And now if I jump to uh, another laptop that is currently on that port, we should, if I unplug it and then replug it, because uh, it's Windows, it should pick up a new address. So if I jump to this, IP config. There we go, 10.10.10.254. So it's picked up a new address in that new range. So if I jump back to my first laptop, um, which is now in my control network, if I do an IP config, you can see I have a 192.168.10 and going back to the other laptop, you can see I have a 10.10.10.254 network address. Now, at this point, these two networks can still communicate with each other. This is obviously something that uh, not everyone is going to want. So what I'm going to do is just prove that we have communication. So I'm just going to ping across. So I'm going to ping uh, from this network to the other network, 192.168.10.254, which is the address of my control network PC. So you can see I have control uh, or not control, you can see I have access to that. And if I go back to my other laptop uh, and try and ping the other way, if I ping 10.10.10.254, you will see that I also can ping the other way. So both of these laptops at the moment sit in different IP spaces, in you know, different network segments, but they can communicate with each other via the uh, two bridges via the router. The next steps would be to add wireless to these two networks. So the way we do that, if I go back to my control network, PC um, is up in wireless. We have these two, essentially two interfaces. So in this particular box, one of these is for the two and a half gig uh, or 2.4 gig, and the other one is for the five gig. What we're going to do, when we created uh, the original using the quick set, it will have created uh, what's known as a security profile. So in here, and you can see it says dynamic key and there's a, there's a password assigned. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new security profile, and then we're going to jump back and create our interfaces that use that security profile. Um, the security profile essentially is the password. So we're going to click add new and I'm going to call it profile guest. And I'm going to leave these the same, but I'm going to set a, a new key that's different to the first one because I want two different passwords for my two different networks. And again, I'm going to leave everything else the same. So apply and OK. And get rid of that. So I have two profiles. One's my default, one's my one's mine for the guest, and they have different passwords that are different lengths shown here. So the next thing we do is we're going to create our uh, essentially interfaces. So the way this works is we're going to add SSIDs. So at the moment, one of these will be uh, Control 2. Yeah, that's the 2.4 gig. And then the other one will be Control 5, which would be the 5 gigahertz band. So I'm going to add some virtual interfaces. These virtual interfaces will appear as SSIDs, but essentially they'll be treated as if they're like VLAN off traffic. It's not quite like that, but um, imagine it being that the new SSIDs that we're going to create will only be able to access those networks that we've created and added to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create those networks first. So the first one is going to be, uh, I'm going to call it, leave it as WLAN 3. In here, I'm going to add the SSID of guest 2. So this will be my guest 2.4 gigahertz network. And WLAN 1 was my 2.4 gigahertz network that, that existed. So everything else I'm going to leave the same. Uh, so I'm going to hit apply on that one and then OK. You can see it's created that here as a virtual. And then I'm going to create another virtual, WLAN 4. I'm going to give it a different SSID for uh, guest 5. So it'll be the guest 5 gig. In my master interface, I'm going to need to change that to be WLAN 2, which is my 5 gig uh, AP. So I'm going to hit apply and then OK. So you can see it's created those down here. One thing I didn't do here, which I should have done, is in the virtual down here, there is a security profile. So in here, I need to change that to be the guest. So this essentially is changing the passwords to be the passwords I've set in that other security profile. So again, we've got two security profiles, one for the guest network, one for the default, which is our control network. 
and then in our virtual interfaces we've chosen that security profile which therefore changes the password now we've got those virtual ssids they will already be starting to show up available to devices to be able to connect to so now what we need to do is we need to add those virtual networks the ssids to the physical networks so obviously our wlan1 wlan2 were already done and the way that this is done is up in the bridge again go to ports and then in here we're going to go add new so in here we're going to choose our new wireless lan so three and four and we're going to add those to our bridge guest network leaving everything else the same in here we can now see that we have ether5 wlan3 wlan4 as all connected to our bridge guest network so what this means is that if i was to jump onto another laptop and join that wireless network we'd be get given an ip address in that range so on this other laptop i'm going to quickly jump onto that wireless network so I'm going to stick this on the guest 5 gigahertz network. And again, if I do an IP config, it will now show that I have two addresses that are both within that network. So great. So we now have a wireless network connected to a wide network and another wireless network connected to another wide network. And currently they can both see each other. So the last thing we would do in this scenario is essentially set up a firewall between our two networks. So the way that we're going to do this is in our firewall, we're going to add some rules that say that bridge control and bridge guest can't talk to each other. So at the moment we can ping between our networks and what we're going to do is we're going to stop that from happening. So in firewall, I'm going to add two new filter rules. So I'm going to click add new. We're going to add these to the forward chain. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose the in interface and the out interface. So I'm going to go in from control to out guest. So control to guest. And what I'm going to do is down in the action, I'm going to choose drop. So that means that this traffic will get binned. So it will never get from one network to the other. So I'm going to click apply. Okay. And then I'm going to add another rule again to the forward chain. Then I'm going to add the in interface as being the guest and the out interface being the control. And again, scroll down and action drop. And they will appear down at the bottom. Now I've tested this. It doesn't actually matter the order of these two. There are some scenarios where the order of this list actually does matter. So just something to be aware that the order in this firewall filter rules does matter. I can now test that those firewall rules work by going back to uh, back to command prompt. And if I try pinging the uh, device, so this is on my control network. If I try pinging the device that's currently on my uh, guest network, we shouldn't get any responses. Likewise, from my other laptop, if I try pinging my control laptop, I should also not get any responses. Great, so this shows that we've essentially blocked traffic between the two networks, but obviously we still need to make sure that we've still got internet access. So you may have seen earlier that this is an internet connected router. It does have an external to its IP address. So if I quickly jump into uh, Google, you can see that I can Google Google from my control network. And if I try from my guest network of Googling Google, I can also do the same. So. There you go, there's two segregated networks that can both reach the internet but have no possibility of talking with devices between the networks. That's how you create segregated LANs that also have wireless networks attached to them. And just in case anyone asks, this is all within one box. So I'm not adding a second AP or anything like that. This is all within one router board box that costs 50 odd quid. Thanks for watching.